Lesson 1. Interviewing for a Visa. Situation 1. Everyone who goes to the United States to study has to pass a visa application interview. Paul and Cindy just received I-20s from Metropolitan University, MU. Now they are at the American Institute in Taiwan, AIT, to interview for their F-1 visas. Paul is the first to be interviewed. Have you ever been to the United States? No, I have never been there before. Where are you going to study? Metropolitan University. Why did you choose MU? They offer an excellent selection of courses. Besides, I like the student body there. There are a lot of international students, including many Taiwanese. I think I can learn a lot by studying in this kind of environment. Do you have any work experience related to your proposed field of study? Yes, I worked part-time as a computer operator last summer. I enjoyed the experience, and I think that I have the right personality for that field. Very good. Okay, let me look at your papers here for a minute. All right. Situation 2 Immigration officials usually ask questions about the purpose and length of one's stay and also about one's financial standing. Cindy is ready for these questions. She confidently walks to the interview room after Paul comes out smiling. Can you tell me how you plan to cover your expenses in the United States? My parents are going to pay my tuition and also provide me with up to 20,000 U.S. dollars per year. And I myself have saved about 5,000 to put towards my studies. Your TOEFL scores aren't very high. Do you plan to take English courses after arriving at the school? Yes, I will take some English courses first to improve my English. Do you have any scholarships or fellowships? No, I didn't apply for any because my financial resources are sufficient. Do you have any relatives in the United States? Yes, my aunt, uncle, and their children live in Florida. Are they U.S. citizens or U.S. permanent residents? They are U.S. citizens. What are your plans after graduation? Do you expect to work while in the U.S.? No, I don't. I want to return to Taiwan as soon as possible. I hope to get a job teaching at a university in Taiwan. What's your anticipated length of stay in the United States? My master's program lasts for two years, and that is how long I plan to stay. Thank you for your cooperation. I hope you have a very pleasant stay and great success in your studies. Thank you very much. Lesson 2 On an Airplane Situation 1 Finally, the big day has come. Paul arrives at the airport with a large duffel bag and a backpack. On time as usual, he looks around for Cindy. About ten minutes later, she arrives with two bulging suitcases. The two of them go to the counter to check in. Welcome to Northwest Airlines. May I help you? Yes, we would like to check in, please. Please give me your passports and tickets and put your luggage on the scale. Okay. 25 kilograms. Not too heavy, right? No, you're within the limit. Would you like a window seat or an aisle seat? I'd like a window seat, please. I have no preference. Okay. I have you in seats 26A and B. Here are your baggage claim tickets. Be sure to hold on to them till you arrive in New York. Boarding time is 9.45 at gate number 10 for flight 633. You will have to go through customs and transfer in San Francisco. Enjoy your flight. Thank you very much.
Situation 2 After about an hour in a crowded waiting lounge, Paul and Cindy notice that boarding is about to begin for flight 633. They go to the gate, and when their row is called, they board the plane. Good morning. Welcome to Northwest Airlines. May I see your boarding passes? Okay. Row 26, seats A and B. Go straight down the aisle and your seats will be on your right. Thanks. I'm a little bit nervous. This is my first plane trip. Don't worry. All you have to do is buckle your seat belt, sit back, and relax. I can't wait to see the Big Apple. After about an hour, two flight attendants come with a food cart and begin serving lunch. Anything to drink? Apple juice, please. I'd like a Coke. By the way, could you please bring me a blanket? Sure. I'll get one for you in a moment. Would you like beef or chicken for lunch? Chicken, please. I ordered a vegetarian meal when I bought my ticket. Let's see. You're in 26B? Yes, I have you down for a vegetarian meal. I'll bring that out in a second. Okay, thank you. The flight attendant comes to Paul and Cindy again about an hour before landing. Here are I-94 arrival cards and customs declaration forms. Please fill them out before landing. Thanks. Lesson 3. Immigration and Customs Situation 1 Because San Francisco is their port of entry in the United States, Paul and Cindy must go through customs there before they transfer to their final destination, New York. Wow! After a 14-hour flight, we are finally here! What do we do next? We have to pass the arrival inspection, customs, and then transfer to New York. Is it hard? No, not at all. Things will go smoothly. So long as you aren't carrying anything illegal. Cindy is handing her travel documents to an immigration official, who checks them over and asks her a few questions. Good morning. May I see your passport? Here it is. What's the purpose of your visit? I am going to attend a master's program at MU. How long will you be staying? Two years. Where are you going to live in the U.S.? I'll have a home stay in New York. Okay, no problem. Have a nice stay. Situation 2 Cindy and Paul are going through customs. A customs officer asks Paul to open his bags. Can I see your customs declaration form, please? Yes, here you are. Do you have anything to declare? I only have some daily necessities, nothing special. Why don't you put your bags up on the counter and open them for me? Here you go. What are these? These are my personal belongings. Do you have any gifts or souvenirs? Yes, I have some gifts for my advisors. What are these brown tablets? That is medicine for my stomach. Is this camera a gift for someone? No, it's for my personal use. Do you have any plants, meat, or alcoholic beverages to declare? No. Oh, wait. Actually, I forgot about the mangoes. You see, my mom gave me some mangoes to take with me on the plane. You know that you're not allowed to bring any fresh fruit into the United States, right? Yes, I know. I'm sorry. Well, I'll have to confiscate them. I'm not going to fine you, but next time you might not be so lucky. Thank you. Okay, that's all. You may zip up your bag now. Give this card to the official at the exit. Okay, thank you.
Lesson 4 In Transit Changing Planes and Changing Money Situation 1 After going through customs, Paul and Cindy ask an airline representative where they need to go next. Excuse me, we're transit passengers. How do we transfer planes to New York? What airline are you traveling with? Northwest Airlines. First, place your bags back on the conveyor belt over there. Then check in at the Northwest Airlines transfer counter just up ahead. Get your boarding pass for New York and then go directly to the transit lounge and wait for your flight to begin boarding. Cindy and Paul approach the Northwest Airlines transfer counter. Is this the transfer counter? Yes. May I help you? We are transit passengers, and we're on our way to New York. May I see your tickets? Here they are. Here are your boarding passes. Flight 67 will be boarding at gate 5 in three hours. In three hours? Thanks. Situation 2 After a six-hour flight, Paul and Cindy arrive at John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York. They want to buy some gifts at the duty-free shop and then meet their new friend Mike, who will be picking them up. Could you tell me where the duty-free shop is? It's just next to the transit lounge. Also, is there a place around here where I can change some money? Yes, that counter over there. One more thing. Do you know if there is a change machine around? Yes, there is one around the corner. Thanks. After changing money and buying some duty-free items, they go outside to meet Mike, who has been waiting for a long time. How's it going? My name is Paul Jung. Hi, I'm Mike Chin. And I'm Cindy Du. Sorry to keep you waiting so long. That's okay. You both must be tired after such a long flight. Yeah, I am exhausted. I'll take you to my house where you can rest up, and then tomorrow I'll take you apartment hunting. Thanks, but... Could we go to a bank first after we drop our luggage off at your place? Why? I don't like to keep such a large amount of money on me. I'd like to open an account right away. That's a really smart idea. Yeah, no problem. Let's go. Lesson 5 Opening a bank account. Situation 1 In the late afternoon, Mike takes Paul and Cindy to a bank to open an account. I would like to open a checking account and a savings account. May I see an ID? Here's my passport. Just a moment, please. Here are some forms for you to fill out. Okay. How much interest do you pay on your savings accounts? The interest rate on our regular passbook accounts is 2.5%. I see. But isn't it possible to get a higher interest rate? We have several types of one-year certificates of deposit that have a higher yield. But that means I can't withdraw the money for one year. You can withdraw the money early, but there's a penalty for doing so. Well, I think I'll just open a regular account. Situation 2 Paul also wants to cash some traveler's checks. By the way, I'd like to cash some traveler's checks here are ten $1,000 traveler's checks. 
Do you want to cash them all, or would you like to deposit some of the money in your new account? I'd like to put nine thousand seven hundred dollars in my account, and get the remaining three hundred dollars in cash. Just a moment. I'll do that for you right away. Would you countersign your checks for me, please? Is this right? Yes. And how would you like the three hundred dollars? I'd like three fifty-dollar bills, five twenties and five tens. Okay, here you go. By the way, I'm expecting some money from Taipei. Is there anything I need to tell my parents so they can wire it to me? Yes, you'll need to tell them your account number and the correct name and branch number of this bank. And what about an ATM card and checkbooks? You'll need to order numbered checks, but for now you can use this ATM card and these starter checks. Can I use this card at any ATM machine? Yes, you can use it at any machine which bears these symbols. And if I lose this card, who should I call? You can call this number here. It's twenty-four hours. Great. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your help. Lesson six, homestay. Situation one. Two days after arriving in the United States, Cindy visits the house where she will be staying. It is a two-story brick house in the suburbs. She walks up the front steps and rings the doorbell. Sue, her host mom, welcomes her. Here, let me show you around the house. That'd be great. Here's the dining room, and through that doorway over there is the living room. Every room looks so comfortable. We like it. Now let's go up to your room on the second floor. They go upstairs. This is your room. Wow. This room is going to be great. Make yourself at home. You can hang your clothes in this closet. Okay. Do you happen to have any spare hangers? Sure. I'll bring them to you later. By the way, is there an outlet where I can plug in my computer? Yeah. I think there's an outlet under the desk. Let me know if you need anything else. Situation two. After looking around the first floor of the house and taking a moment to check out her room, Cindy joins Sue downstairs in the kitchen. This is the kitchen. What a big, beautiful kitchen! You can help yourself to whatever's in the fridge. Th thanks. That's really nice of you. We're pretty relaxed and easygoing here. Are there any special rules I should know about? Well, not really. Just try not to come home too late, and try not to play music too loud. We don't want the neighbors calling the police. Sure, no problem. I probably won't be out past ten on most days. That's fine. Do you need help with housework, cooking, or anything? No, that's okay. We all try to keep the house neat. Is there really nothing I need to do? As long as you keep your room clean and do your own laundry, that should be fine. When can I take showers? We all seem to use the bathroom. Between seven and eight in the morning, so it tends to get a little congested then. Other than that, any time is fine. Okay. Well, I usually shower at night anyway. Oh, good. What else? Oh, yeah. Let me show you the utility shed in the backyard. 
Sue and Cindy walk out to the backyard. What a beautiful backyard! I'm going to love living here. Lesson 7. Renting an Apartment Situation 1. Paul has decided to rent an apartment rather than live in a dormitory at school. He shudders at the thought of sharing a room with a roommate. He loves cleanliness, and not everyone loves cleanliness as much as he does. Paul decides to go through a realtor to save himself the trouble of running all over town looking. Are you looking for an apartment? Yes, I'm interested in finding a one-bedroom apartment near Washington Square. I think I have just the right apartment for you. Oh, good. Can you describe it? Yes. It has one bedroom, a large living room, and a full kitchen. So there's a refrigerator? Yes, it's brand new. It sounds great. How much is the rent? It's eight fifty a month. When can I see it? We can take a spin by there now if you would like. The landlord left a set of keys with me. Okay, that would be great. Situation 2 Paul takes one look at the apartment and decides on the spot that he wants to rent it. The realtor calls the landlord and asks him to come over to sign the lease. When the landlord arrives, he produces a rental agreement. Wow, it has a balcony! Yes, complete with a nice view. How many windows are there in the apartment? Hmm, let me see. I think there are two in the bedroom and one each in the living room and kitchen. It's just what I want. I think I'm ready to sign. I'll call up the landlord right now. Twenty minutes later, the landlord arrives. Before you sign the lease, do you have any questions? Yes. Does the rent include utilities? It includes everything except cable TV and telephone. How much is cable? It usually comes out to about $40 a month. Also, am I allowed to sublet the apartment? No, I'm afraid subletting the apartment isn't permitted. I see. Do you allow pets? Sorry, that's out of the question. I don't have a problem with it, but unfortunately, the building doesn't allow it. It's a building regulation. I see. The realtor mentioned a parking lot. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. You can park in front of the building. The rental fee for a parking space is $60 a month. Okay. I'm ready to sign. Should I pay by cash or check? It's up to you. Lesson 8. Shopping at the Supermarket Situation 1 Several days after Paul and Cindy move into their new homes, they meet up with Mike and his girlfriend Tina to go shopping. They go to the supermarket to buy some food to take with them on a picnic the following day. Tina and Cindy talk about what they plan to buy. Let's get a shopping cart first. Let me get out my list. Every time I go to the supermarket, I make a shopping list so that I won't forget things. What's the first thing on your list? Lunch meat for our picnic tomorrow. The supermarket has prepackaged meats in the back. What if we don't want it prepackaged? Then, we go to the meat section and a butcher cuts it for us. What else do we need for our picnic? Well, other stuff for sandwiches, cheese and bread, and then things like mayonnaise, pickles, and mustard. Where do we go for all that? These supermarkets are so big. Well, 
The good cheese is over at the deli counter, and the bread is in the bakery section. Oh, I'm totally lost. Situation two. Tina and Cindy decide to buy some cold cuts and other picnic favorites at the supermarket's delicatessen counter. They take a number from a ticket dispenser. Number fifty-six. Oh, that's us. Can I help you? Yes, I need one pound of smoked turkey, a quarter pound of cheddar cheese, and a half pound of potato salad. Okay. Anything else? I also need a half pound of ham. Please cut it in very thin slices. Will that be all? Yes. Here, here you go. Thank, thank you. Paul, Paul is having a hard time finding some things he needs, so he decides to ask a clerk for help. Excuse me. Hi. What can I do for you? Can you tell me where the frozen pizza is? Y yes. Make a right at the end of this aisle and walk straight ahead. The frozen food section runs right up the side wall. The pizzas are at the far end of the section. Also, do you have soy sauce? It's in aisle eight. Thanks. No problem. After Paul fills his cart, he goes to the checkout counter. With tax, that comes to fifty-seven dollars and twenty-one cents. He hands her sixty dollars. Let me see if I have a penny. Here you go. All right, your change is two dollars and eighty cents. Here you are. Have a nice day. Thanks. You too. Lesson nine: Shopping at the mall. Situation one: After buying some essential items at the supermarket, the four friends decide to check out the local mall. Upon arrival, they split up and go to different stores. Paul is browsing through an electronics store. How may I help you, sir? Ah,、uh, I'm just looking. Thanks. Okay. If you need any help, just let me know. A few minutes later. Can I have a look at that CD player? Sure. We just got these in. The sound quality is excellent, and there's a fifteen percent discount too. How much is it with the discount? Let me see. It comes to one hundred and sixty-two dollars, including tax. Okay, I'll take it. Cash or charge? Charge. Here's my credit card. After the transaction. Would you sign here, please? Sure. Thank you. Here's your credit card and your copy of the receipt. Situation two. When Paul went to the electronics store, Cindy and Tina decided to take a look at a nearby clothing store. Cindy is about to try on some clothes. Hi, can I help you? Can you tell me the price of this coat? It's one hundred and sixty dollars without tax. Hmm. I don't really want to spend that much. How much are your T-shirts? Let, let me see. I believe those are on sale. Yes, they've been marked down to sixteen ninety nine. Can I try one on? Sure. The fitting room is over there. A few minutes later. How does the shirt fit? It's too big. Do you have it in a smaller size? Hold on. Let me check for you. A minute later. Okay, I think this one will fit better. I'll take it. Thanks. I'll bring it to the counter for you. Thanks for your help. Mike is in a clothing store. 
He wants to return a shirt that he bought the previous week. He is asking a salesperson if that is possible. Hi, I bought this shirt here last week, and I want to return it. Is that possible? What's the problem with it? It's too large. Do you want to exchange it? No, I'd like a refund, please. Okay. Do you have the receipt? Yes. Here you are. Lesson 10 Eating at a Restaurant. Situation 1 After spending the whole afternoon shopping, the four friends are exhausted. They decide to go to a fancy restaurant to reward themselves after a busy day. Welcome, party of four? Yes, we'd like a quiet place by the window if possible. Certainly, sir. This way, please. They follow a waiter to a table by the window, and he gives them menus. Welcome to Appleton Restaurant. My name is Andy, and I'll be your waiter this evening. Are you ready to order? Yes. I'll have a green salad and the New York steak, please. All right. How would you like your steak? Rare, medium, or well done? Medium, please. And you, miss? I'd like a turkey sandwich with potato chips, please. And you, sir? I don't know what to order. I need a bit more time to think about it. Sure. I'll come back in a few minutes. Situation 2 Not sure what to order, Paul and Cindy decide to ask the waiter for his recommendation. What's the special today? Rose chicken. It comes with soup, salad, and your choice of a baked potato or french fries. I highly recommend it. Well, let me see. I think I'll have the special. All right. And what kind of soup would you like? Today we have French onion and cream of broccoli. I'll have the French onion soup. And what kind of dressing would you like on your salad? We have Italian, French, Thousand Island, and blue cheese. I'd like Italian, please. Italian. Okay. And would you like a baked potato or french fries? French fries, please. And what would you like to drink? I'll have a Coke. And what would you like, ma'am? I'll have what he's having, except I'd like cream of broccoli soup. Thanks. All right. Thank you. I'll be back in a moment with some dinner rolls. After the meal, the waiter comes to the table. How was everything? It was delicious. Do you want some dessert? No, I'm full. What about you guys? Are you kidding? We're all stuffed. I think we'll just take the check. Thanks. Sure. I'll be right back. Mike, I really appreciate your help this week. Let me take care of the check. Oh, no. Let's go Dutch this time. Let me pay today, and you can pay next time. How's that? Okay. It's a deal. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, thanks. Lesson 11. Making a phone call. Situation 1. Now that he has moved in, Paul arranges to get a phone line installed. 
he calls the telephone company from Mike's house. I'd like to get phone service in my new apartment. Okay. Can I have your full name, please? Paul Jong. That's C H A N G. And your address? Number 201 University Avenue. And what's your mother's maiden name? Guo. Can you spell that for me? K U O. Thanks. Your date of birth? August 18, 1976. All right. Your new phone number is 555 7849, and you'll be able to use the line within three working days. If you have any questions, please feel free to call our service line again. Thanks for your help. Situation 2. Paul's telephone line has not been connected yet, so he uses a public phone to make a collect call to his aunt in St. Louis. Later, when his number is working, he calls a friend in Los Angeles to tell him about his new number. May I help you? Yes. I'd like to make a collect call, please. What's the number you're calling? The area code is 314, and the number is 555-9034. And the name of the person you're calling? Amy Mason. And your name? Paul Jong. All right. Please stay on the line. The operator calls Paul's aunt. You have a collect call from Paul Jong. Will you accept the charges? Sure, I'll take it. The call is connected. Go ahead, please. Thanks. Once he is able to use his phone, Paul tries to call a friend in Los Angeles. Hello? Hello, Jesse? I'm sorry there's nobody here by that name. Is this 555-4703? No, it isn't. You have the wrong number. Oh, I'm sorry. Lesson 12. At the Post Office. Situation 1. Paul and Cindy are going to the post office. Paul is buying stamps for a letter to Taiwan. He also wants to mail a package to his parents. How can I help you? I'd like to buy stamps for this letter to Taiwan. All right. Anything else? Yes. I'd also like to mail this package. Where is the package going? Also to Taiwan. How do you want to send it? Express mail, please. Are there any valuables in this package? Yes, I want to insure it. All right. I wrote the address in Chinese and then added Taipei, Taiwan in English. Is that okay? Yes, that's just fine. Oh, and I'd also like to buy 10 postcards, please. Here you go. Situation 2 Cindy is sending a package to her sister in San Francisco and a letter to a friend in New York. Next, please. Hi. I'd like to send this package to San Francisco. How do you want to send it? Regular or priority? What's the difference between regular and priority? Priority is more expensive, but it's faster. Your package will arrive in two days. Then let's go with priority. Can I help you with anything else? Yes. I also need to send this letter to New York. What kind of special delivery do you have? This is a very important letter. Well, you can send it by certified mail. What's that? Certified mail is for deliveries within the United States. The person who receives it must sign for it. That way, you can make sure they actually receive it. Do you have any other services? You can also send it by express delivery. The rates are much higher, but it will arrive by noon tomorrow. Why don't we do that? 
This letter is worth it. All right. Let me weigh it. That'll be sixteen dollars and fifty cents. Uh oh. I only have a hundred dollar bill. Can you take a hundred? No problem. Here you are. And your change is eighty three dollars and fifty cents. Thanks. She starts to walk away. Wait, here's your receipt. Oh, thank you. Lesson thirteen: Inviting friends over. Situation one: Paul is thinking about having some friends come over to his apartment for dinner. He discusses the plan with Mike one day after class. Hey, Mike, I'm thinking of having some friends come over to my apartment for dinner next week. That sounds great. What day? How about Monday? Hmm. I'm afraid Monday is out for me. I have to work at the computer lab on Monday. How about Tuesday night? Tuesday's out. I am supposed to join an English conversation club. What about Wednesday night? Wednesday, I am supposed to go see a movie with a friend. I don't think there's any way I can get out of it. Are you free on Thursday? Well, unfortunately, I'm tied up on Thursday. I have an appointment with my dentist to have my teeth cleaned. Are you free on Friday night? Actually, I am. I guess Friday's the best choice. I'll call Cindy and Tina to see if they're available on Friday night. Okay. Tell me what you guys decide on. I will. I'll call you later. Situation two. Paul makes some phone calls. He is asking Cindy if she is free on Friday night. Hello. Hello, this is Paul. May I speak to Cindy? Speaking. What's up, Paul? Not a lot. But listen, I'm throwing a party at my house on Friday night. Do you think you can make it? Yeah, that sounds like fun. What time? It starts at seven. Bring Tina with you. Mike is planning on coming too. Sure, we'll be there. All right. We'll see you then. See you. After Cindy accepts Paul's invitation, Paul calls Mike to tell him about the final plans for Friday night. Hello, hello, is Mike in? This, this is Mike. Hi, Mike. It's Paul. It looks like everything's all set for Friday. Sounds great. When should I be there? I think we're going to start around seven. What should I bring? Just bring yourself. Okay then. I'll see you on Friday at seven. I can't wait to see your place. I think you'll like it. See you then. See you. Lesson fourteen: Getting a haircut. Situation one. Paul is calling a hair salon to make an appointment to get his hair cut. Hi, I'd like to make an appointment to get my hair cut. Who is your stylist? Well, my friend says that Henry does a good job. When would you like to come in? How about Wednesday afternoon at three thirty? Let me check the schedule. Do you just need a cut, or will you need a color or perm as well? Just a haircut will be fine. Let me see. Henry has an opening at three forty-five. How's that? That's fine. And your name? Paul Jong, C H A N G. Okay, Paul. Then we'll see you on Wednesday at three forty-five. See you then. Thanks. Situation two. It is Wednesday afternoon, 
and Cindy and Paul have just arrived at the hair salon. Henry, the stylist, asks Paul how he would like his hair cut. What would you like to have done today? I'd like a trim, please. All right. How would you like me to cut it? Short on the sides and in back, and longer on top and in front. Do you want a shampoo? Yes, please. And where would you like to part your hair? On the left, please. After the haircut. Okay, we're done. I'll hold this mirror up so you can see the back. How do you like it? Could you trim the front a little more, please? There. How's that? Very nice. You do a good job. Cindy also wants to get a haircut, but she has not made an appointment. She decides to ask and see if they take walk ins. Excuse me, do you take walk ins? Yes, we do, but I need to check the schedule. What do you want to have done today? I'd just like to trim off the split ends. Let me see. Angela will be available in ten minutes. Is that okay? It's fine with me. Lesson 15 at the Bank. Situation 1. Paul and Cindy are at the bank. They both need to make some transactions. Good afternoon. How may I help you? I'd like to cash a check, please. Please sign the back of the check and write down your account number. All right. May I see an ID? Here you are. Your check is for $320. How would you like that? I'd like a 50, two 20s, and three 10s, and I want to deposit the remaining $200. Did you fill out a deposit slip yet? Yes, here you are. Okay, here's the receipt for your deposit, and here's your cash. He counts it for her. Can I help you with anything else today? Actually, can I exchange a $20 bill for some quarters? I need them for bus fare. Sure. Here are two rolls. Each roll has $10 in quarters. Situation 2. Now it is Paul's turn at the counter. He wants to purchase some traveler's checks. May I help you? Yes. I'd like to withdraw $200 from my savings account and use it to buy traveler's checks. Okay. Thank you. What's your account number? It's 113-560-901. Can I see an ID? Here you go. And how would you like your traveler's checks? $50 traveler's checks will be fine. All right. Here are four $50 checks and the receipt. By the way, you need to sign the top line right away. And these work just like other traveler's checks, right? Yes. When you want to use a check, you'll need to use the same signature to countersign on the bottom line. And I do that in front of the person who's cashing it for me, right? That's right. And by signing the top line now, you make it hard for someone else to use them. Okay, got it. Thank you. Also, remember to put the receipt somewhere other than where you keep the checks. Oh, that's right. That way, I'll still have it if the checks are lost. Correct. And if you have the receipt, the checks can be replaced. It always seems like a lot of trouble to get traveler's checks, but it's worth the safety.
Can I help you with anything else? No, thank you for your help. You're welcome. See you. Have a good day. You too. Lesson 16 Seeing a Doctor. Situation 1 Cindy notices that Paul is not feeling well and suggests he go to the health clinic on campus. Paul makes an appointment over the phone. What's the matter, Paul? You look terrible. I have a cold. You had better call the health clinic and make an appointment. Paul makes a phone call to the health clinic. Hello? Campus Health Clinic, how can I help you? Hi. I'd like to make an appointment. I'm not feeling well. What are your symptoms? I have a cough, my head aches, and I have a runny nose. Oh, yeah. I have a sore throat, too. Is 3 o'clock this afternoon okay? That's fine. What's your name? Paul Jong. Okay, Paul. We'll see you this afternoon at 3. Thanks. Situation 2 When Paul goes in for a checkup, Dr. Wong asks him some questions. I feel awful. <coughs> I've been coughing for three days and I have a runny nose, a headache, and a sore throat. Hmm. How's your appetite? I've scarcely eaten anything in the past three days. Let me look at your throat. Open your mouth and say, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh. Good. Now let's take your temperature. He takes Paul's temperature. You have a fever. Let me listen to your heart. A minute later. Paul, I'm afraid that you've come down with the flu. Is it serious? Will I need a shot? No, you won't need a shot. You'll be fine in a few days. But you should stay home and rest. I also want you to take some medicine and drink a lot of liquids. Okay. Are you allergic to any type of medication? Nope. Very good. I'll write a prescription for you. When your appetite returns, stick to foods that are easily digested. Thank you, doctor. Should I come back in a few days? If you are feeling better, that shouldn't be necessary. But if your fever persists, then I'll want you back here. Okay, thanks. Just get plenty of rest, and you should be fine. Nothing to worry about. 